what's up guys this is circuit breaker here with our main host hydroxide ant that'd be this guy and this is background noise episode five yeah we made it to episode five guys that is very impressive when we first started this we didn't think it'd make it past episode one yeah it's true oh man the first yeah when we first started this i mean it was kind of just thrown together uh, this week it is just me and Circuit Breaker, uh, to be perfectly honest. There is a small chance that uh, Lyrical Phoenix might hop on later, but he has something uh, going on in his personal life right now, so, uh, yeah. you know, sometimes stuff happens. Uh, oh, and when I... In real life, always getting in people's ways. Yeah, right? Yeah, real life things getting uh, in the way of your internet life. Why would you ever let that happen? <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Yeah, we're not going to be a ball and chain if anyone needs to miss a show. They, they need to miss a show. There's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Alright, so we want to start this episode off with a creepypasta reading. I hope you guys don't mind. Um, I'm going to read a creepypasta entitled Cold Oblivion. But before that, I kind of want to talk about last week's creepypasta uh, right through me. Circuit Breaker, dude, let's yeah. talk about it for a minute. Like... Well, what do you think of Right Through Me? Well, it's really it's really one of those kinds that that sort of like leaves you in the dark more so than than others really. It it just yeah, I I know what you're I, trying to say. Like it's I, I don't want to spoil anything, but you is you're never gonna ex- well I can't say you're never gonna expect anything. Some people with like with like yeah. extreme deduction skills may. Maybe yeah, but like ahead of time, but the ending, is, the ending will catch you every time. Yeah, right through me was one of my favorites. So I'll be perfectly honest. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just the. I mean, I read it last week, so everyone knows the ending already. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but wow, like I mean, like now that like when once you know the ending of it, like oh okay I I. Spoiler alerts if you haven't uh, watched or listened to last week's. Um, the guy, the, it was uh, the story was about a, uh, I guess, a boyfriend and his girlfriend driving and they get in a car accident. But it turned out the boyfriend was dead the entire time. But um, and then it don't you don't find out until like the last line that he's dead. The very, the like very, the very last, last line. line where he says the doctor mm-hmm. walked right through me. Um, and I was like, wow. Because I honestly didn't see it coming, and I honestly was reading it, like, really goofy and stuff, and I honestly, like, felt bad that I was reading it so goofy. Um, just, like, how deep it was. Like, it, like, it got to me. But, uh, yeah. like, wow. It's like, he, he watched, like, now, it made so much sense that he was dead, though. Like, the fact that the paramedics didn't help him out, and they only helped the girlfriend yeah. out, and, like, like, that they didn't even know, like, they didn't even notice him get onto the, like, ambulance. Yeah, and they didn't, like, ask him any questions or anything. Uh, like, and they, they didn't, the doctor didn't, like, no, notice him in the room. Yeah. So. I'm glad that they didn't, they didn't do anything that, that would give it away, though. Like, early. Yeah, I, I was really like, glad about that. Like, too. if he, like, if he said that he, that he somehow turned out fine from the accident, then it would be, like, a clear giveaway, like, no, he's dead. Yeah, right, but he still said he was, like, a little bit, like, um, like badger and stuff, right? At some point. Yeah, you like you like you mentioned some of his, some of his injuries. And yeah, things like but that, he but said he was able to walk away from it, so which is believable. Yeah. I mean, many people have terrible accidents and can walk away from them. That is definitely a believable thing. But uh, well, I guess without further ado, uh, should I read this? Go ahead. All right, guys. This one's entitled "Cold Oblivion." All right, I'm just gonna jump right in. I don't have much time left. I must recant my tale before my time is up, before I fade out of existence. The first thing I remember is w- waking up outside. It was snowing out, and I was naked. I felt dozens of children's hands about my head and body, rubbing my skin back and forth. I tried to run away, but my legs and feet were firmly planted under the snow, deep into the ground. I tried to flail my arms, but they too were frozen, immovable. I was trapped. I had no way of escape, and could only hope that one of these children would soon set me free. The, tri- the children stood back and glared at me with awe and wonderment. They whispered things to each other as they continued to, 
to gape at my brawl and make it form. I wanted to shout at them, beg for them to release me, but none heard my plea. One small boy approached me and looked with a wide, evil grin upon his true like face, and got down on the ground on his hands and knees as other little boy quickly climbed on his back and met me face to face. He was quizzical, contemplative, as if he wanted to do more to me, but could not decide on what to do. I closed my eyes in hopes that I could concentrate on a happy place while he performed his dastardly deed. He grabbed my nose and twisted it around and jammed it back into my skull, but carefully enough not to break it. The pain surged through my body as he twisted and shoved for what seemed like eternity. Wow, Jake, this is getting loud. What do you think of it so far, bud? I'm thinking that I'm thinking that it's gonna be that's gonna be a lot more innocent than you think. Yeah. Wait, more innocent than you think? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Uh yeah, it, it seems pretty dark for like a like it seems like a like um like a like he's doing like a snow angel or something and like kids are stopping him. Like that's you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like that's what it kinda got from it. Uh but let's let's finish off the second half. The boy then plucked out each of my eyes and placed them back onto my face in a different location. Miraculously, I could see, still see, but my vision was has been permanently skewed, and I think I figured out the end already. He turned, like, that's, it, it didn't say I figured out, that's me saying it, guys. Uh, I think I figured it out. I'm not gonna ruin it, but. He turned to his cohorts and reached for what I thought to be my undoing, but surprisingly, he presented me with this wool scarf, and delicately wrapped it around my neck. It wasn't much, but the warmth was lovely. It was enough for me to concentrate on while I remained out in the vile blizzard. He turned back to his fellow children, and placed a tall black hat on my head, as to mock me. He jumped down and rejoined his comrades as they gazed at me once more. They jumped in and rejoiced as they finished their physical torture of my body, and they just quickly, as it had ended, they simply left me. All the children vanished into the building, white of the snow. They have yet to return. Week after week, month after month, I stood there in a frozen solitude. The snow eventually cleared and I saw the children pass by, not giving me any notice. I saw other people casually walking past me. I tried to call for help, but just like my captors, they could not hear me, either. They could only see me. Soon it began to grow warm. The scarf was no longer needed, but it was not removed. It only slid off my neck, down my shoulders, and onto the ground. My nose, battered and bruised, sludgingly slid out of my skull and rotted down my chest and flopped onto the slushy mix that slowly began to rise around my feet and ankles. My hair stayed firm, but now they showed signs of fatigue. My spine has become deformed as I now slump over to my right side. The chilling pool of ice and water continues to rise. It looks as many costumes the rest of me. I will slowly drown. It has been many months since I first remembered my incarnation. My left eye has completely fallen out. My scarf swims around the pool and has reached too much to my ears, and I have to come to terms with it. I calmly wait for the end. I can only pray that the hereafter is much more forgiving than my short frozen life. Thumpity, thump, thump. Okay, I figured it out. What do you think of this, Jake? Well, it's, a, it's like, a snowman. I think, yeah. Yeah. It's a snowman. Uh, I figured that out, like, um, like right away. Yeah. Um, but that was, that was something. You don't see it as a snowman right away. No, you don't. Because, like, it, from, it seems really dark, but then it's like, huh? Yeah, it's like, no, it's, it's like, these, what are these little kids doing, this is, man? <laughs> this is what people do to snowmen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's like, it's a snowman. <laughs> There's nothing bad about this at all. I mean, you know what I mean? Although I have to say, though, I will be a lot more careful when I make a snowman. Yeah, now. right, I'm going to feel bad for it now. I'm like, I'm, I'm always going up to talk to it and stuff. Like, yo, man, what up, Snowy? Sit there place an air conditioner next to it. I'm like, bro, I know you need it, man. It's like, I know you got feelings, man. I've I read this creep pasta, man, and uh, I know how you feel. <laughs> I know your feels, bro. <laughs> yeah. uh, no. Although, after this, I do. I think that the next thing we should probably talk about is creepypasta in general. Okay. 
Uh, I, you are more of the expert at this, so I, go ahead. Yeah, I'm possibly, actually, possibly more than just creepy pasta, but like, like all, all written or or audio based forms of, you know, horror telling. Okay. Uh, Where, what about it? Do you want to talk about? Well, honestly, I think it, I think that this form is a lot more effective than a lot of than a lot of TV shows and movies because okay. of the fact that. Because of the fact that you're not presented with an image to, well, under most cases, you're not presented with an image. Yes, I, I know what you mean. Base, yeah. You know, to base whatever creature or whatever is going on. Yeah, like, exactly. So, like, it could be whatever, you know what I mean? It could be anything. Like, say that, um, like, you, like, this, it's a vampire movie, and no, not like Twilight. <laughs> no, but, like, never. They don't, they don't glitter in the sunlight. Um,. They like, burn and turn to ash. Yes, exactly. Except for Dracula, because he's because he's apparently invincible. Yeah, right. But no, but like you can picture that guy in any way possible. If you had like three different people or how many other people, I guarantee none of them like draw him the same or picture him the same. That is like oh, the beauty. I mean, aside from aside like from aside from like yeah, given features, but like there's a lot of times where in like stories and stuff they won't give like distinctive features. Like, horror stories, at least. Um, and they'll just, like, leave it to your imagination more of all, which is fascinating, if you ask me. Because, like, you're, like, you know what I mean? It's, oh, yeah. it's like, oh, alright, I'm gonna let you talk about it, because you, you seem to be wanting to talk about it. Well, I mean, well, I mean, and here has, a, has it all pretty much down pat. You know, movies, movies can give you, they can give you one type of fear. They can give you, like, a jump scare. Yeah, that's more, that's more of it. Or they can just have, or they can have like tension build, but those alone, you know, they don't provide a lasting kind of feeling. It's more of like I just want to be scared for like five minutes or so, and then I'll, and then uh, it's just done. Yeah, I definitely know what you're saying. But with but with horror stories, they they manage to dig a little bit deeper in that in that. Okay, to to put. It, to put it as simply as possible, the the best way to scare someone is with their own mind. Yes, exactly. You you, you leave it to their head to create the situation, to create whatever whatever monster that you have yeah. in mind, even if the monster is another person. Do you do like, you want to? Oh, I'm sorry. Continue. Like even like even even an everyday human can be scary when when put into the right situations. Wanna know what's the scariest thing that you can do to someone when tell them when having a story? Saying these five words based on a true story. Oh yeah, those. If you hear those five words like right after or even before, you're gonna freak out. Cause like even if it's not true, there are a lot of times where like people will tell a horror story and say it's based on a true story when in reality it's not. They just want to get that, you know what I mean? They want to get you yeah. psychologically believing that it's a possibility that it could happen. Yeah, it's and that, if it's they that do that, where, where suddenly, where you take whatever danger that you want to create in the person, or rather, the, whatever sense of danger you want to create, and you turn it into something that they can that they can now see as possible. Yes, exactly. Like, like, uh, what was that? What was that one movie that came that came out recently? I think it was The Devil's Do. Honestly, yeah. I don't think that was I don't think that was scaring me all that much because most likely not. No, because because you see some of the things that happen in there, and one of the first things that pops into my head at least is there's no way this could happen. Yeah, exactly. And, it's sometimes it's just that, yeah, like like you're saying, I completely agree. Sometimes it's just like no. <laughs> It's a it's that whole feeling of safety that you get. Yeah. And part of, and I think that another part of that is how now now horror movies sort of rush into you know let you see the monster or let you see what the what the big danger is rather than really rather than really building up to it. Like yeah. like um what was it? I think it was uh, Cloverfield. I think it was. Uh yes, Cloverfield was with um. The, I really like, okay, I just, can I say something real quick about Cloverfield? I really like the type of movie, uh, where it's, like, first person, like, yeah. it's filmed from first person. 
Um, Cloverfield and like the Blair Witch Project are probably the best two examples of those. Yeah, that, um, that that actually is a good way of put. That actually is a good way of a uh, of well of, of visual storytelling, and that also helps with that also helps with the personal danger. Yes, exactly. It's it's pretty good. I really like. I'm sorry. Now talk about what you had to say about Cloverfield. Well, actually, Cloverfield was one of those examples of pretty good pacing to a point where they did take their time. They you know they took their time in establishing that mystery that was sort of. That was sort of believable, and also one that that you know the viewer could also get themselves into, where they felt like they were actually part of it rather than just seeing this stuff happen. Yeah, and that, yeah, I agree. And that at least like the first, at least for the first few people that saw it, really sort of helped to you know get, the, you know, it really sort of helped to get everything through to them. Yeah, I'm not I, gonna say that was the scariest movie out there because uh, honestly, it wasn't. it wasn't that scary, but. No. You know, the, the idea of it. Exactly. It's just like, what if, you know, sometimes it's like, to some people, Godzilla is a scary movie. To yeah. me, Godzilla is an awesome movie that I really liked watching when I was younger. I watched all the Godzilla movies when I was younger. You name it, I watched it. Um, and to some people, those are horror movies. You know? And it's like, I feel like different movies can be horror movies without technically being defined as a horror movie. Like, yeah. like if it's just something that strikes on your fears, it becomes horror. You know? Like, it's kind of like someone with the fear of heights watching a, watching a movie that takes place yes, entirely on exactly. a plane. Or, yeah, someone that's afraid of heights, and there's, like, a scene in the movie where it looks over, like, a cliff or something. Like, to them, that is extremely scary. That might be the scariest thing they've ever seen in a movie. Yeah. And it's they didn't. It wasn't someone jumping out. It wasn't a monster. It was just basing on their fear, and it got to them. Yeah, and I, actually, actually, a really good example of that would actually be there was there was actually something that happened like a couple of years ago where I, I was actually playing a game. Actually, yeah, I was playing War Thunder. Yeah, and my uncle saw. Well, my uncle has a has a really bad fear of heights. Yes, and also and also roller coasters. So. Like, if you, if you put, okay, if you combine flight with the way that I fly when I'm in, when I'm in air combat. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I understand. He was terrified. He, just, just look at the, just look at the screen. He was terrified. <laughs> no, I understand. Yeah. It can really get to you. If you have, like, a fear punch or something, even, like, a video game can get to you. Yeah. But also... Another another really important thing that to, re to consider when you're trying to scare someone is immersion. Yeah, because exactly. if you can't if you can't get the person to sort of well, obviously there are some cases where you don't want the person to you know want to be there, but if you can if you can make the person feel as if they're in that situation as if they are the character, then then you pretty much provide them with with a way to feel all the danger you're presenting them with without needing to have anything extra. Yeah, I like, yeah, I'm, I'm 100 percent Like anyone, anyone who's been mugged and yeah. been unprepared to be mugged can tell you that is, can tell you that will be one of the scariest things in their life. It may not be scary to you, but that's only because maybe you haven't been mugged before. Yeah, exactly. It's like some people are scared of like the weirdest things. Um, I'm, I'm in a psychology class right now, um, and I, we were going over fears, and someone had, their fear, literally, they said, they are afraid of bridges. Like, uh. real, terrified of bridges. And I was, I asked him, it was a dude, too, it was, um, he, this is afraid of bridges, and he, I'm like, why, why are you so afraid of bridges? And he... Because he, when he was younger, he, like, was on a bridge and almost, like, gave out or something. So, uh, and, like, he just never trusts them, like, or something now. And, like, I, that is a reasonable fear. Like, at first, when you, sometimes when you hear someone's fears, it's like, what? You're scared of that? Come on, then. No, what are you really scared of? Yeah. But, like, everyone, like, is scared of things for different reasons. Like, it's just... 
sometimes the scariest things are just a traumatic event from your childhood. You know? Yeah. Like, someone could be a scared of a baseball for their entire life. Because when they were little, they, they played Little League and got hit in the face with a baseball. And it scarred them for life, you know? Yeah. Stuff like that can happen. Like, I, it's just crazy to think, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah. I mean, well, I, what I want to do today, a uh, little, little different thing, since it's just me and you, Circuit Breaker. Yeah. Um, was just to go back and forth a little bit and, like, ask our opinions on certain manners. Like, political views and, like, or just our views and everything, and then, uh, so, like, you know, so the, the audience knows a little more about, like, what, who, what kind of people we are, you know? Yeah. Um. Makes sense to me. So, yeah, so, I mean, like, what, what are your, what do you, what, where do you stand in, um, uh, religion? Oh, actually, that that actually is a bit of a that's actually a bit of a heavy place to start. But uh, all right, do you want to start somewhere lighter and then break into it? Uh, no, I mean, honestly, I think this would be one of the things we get out of the way first. Yeah. Just so that, just so that, you know, whoever you know, whoever disagrees can choose sides now. <laughs> yeah. But really, the way that based on our I, answers, there might be a lot of dislikes coming. <laughs> Oh, so many. <laughs> but for me, I consider myself to be more along the lines of agnostic. Yeah, I that's cool. But that's that's more because I'm more interested in well because of how much I like science. I'm more yeah. interested in finding the truth than trying to find a way to be right. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I respect like, that. Yeah. And this really, this really stands for the whole, like, I, I sort of call it the textbook doctrine, where whenever a textbook is published, all the information is correct for when it's published. Yes. But it, over it, time, new it, information it's can not, be found. Yeah, exactly. And so, even with, even as solid as, as evolution is right now, you never know, there could be something that we find. Yeah, even a exactly. hundred years from now. Like, what if it's not right? <laughs> yeah. You never know. Um, it's like, dude, people thought Copernicus was an idiot back in his day, and he was a genius. Um, I'm, tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Copernicus came up with the uh, the heliocentric universe, right? I he was I heliocentric so. and uh. Uh, someone else um, was uh, genocentric, and heliocentric, I believe, was uh, the sun. It, he knew that the sun was in the universe, and the earth wasn't. I believe genocentric yeah. is uh, the belief that the uh, earth was in the middle. Yeah. And uh, and that look at him. That look at when people like people cast like they castrized him. And, like they just hated they hated him back in his day, and they thought he was an idiot. They thought like. Dude, you're so stupid. Why would you think we're not in the middle? But now, like, we look at him like, yeah, he was the only smart one back then. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, out of that entire crowd, he, he was the only one who really knew what he was talking about. Alright, um, was that was that basically your rap on it, or? Uh, well, not entirely. Okay, because continue. Because there, there's, there's also a more personal, there's also a more personal level to it. Okay, go for it. So, basically what I'm, what I'm trying to say here is, I don't, I will never completely shut down any any real suggestion in either case. I'll consider both. I'll consider any argument, but I have to say that this is this is probably one of the most annoying things on the on the on the whole religion discussion where okay where I'm both sorry. sides will sort of have you know both sides will sort of have a problem. Well, I should know. Atheists have a huge problem with with theists. You know, just sort of proclaiming their, you know, proclaiming their beliefs wherever they go, or at least seeming to do so. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. My biggest question, I hate to cut you off, but I'm sorry. Um, my, my biggest problem with people that are completely atheists or completely 100% religious is they both need to be right. Why can't you both oh, yeah. be right? <laughs> because in most cases, I, I think the smartest bet is that both of them are right in their own ways. 
Like who's Guardians. saying who's saying that they're not both right in some aspects? Yeah. Like why can't why couldn't of uh why couldn't we have a higher being that put okay, let's go along with evolution. How do you know that um God did not put the first level of uh, evolution in play. How do you know he didn't set that up? Yeah. There's, there's th always things like that that got to me. And, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's and, just... on the si and on the side of, you know, on the side of, well, let's say Christianity, because that's that's one of the bigger powers right now. Yeah. Let's say that... I like, think recently all... Islam might have took over as the number one, but I could be wrong. Maybe, but, but I, okay, we all know, like, the whole seven days thing seven days to create the universe, how do we know that, th that those seven days weren't metaphorical? Yes, or or how do you know one god day is not equal to a normal day? Yeah. You know what I mean? What if a god day was hundreds or, or thousands of years? Or even Or billions. even more, billions. What if we're only in day three or something? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, y stuff like that always just, like, makes... Stuff like that keeps me up at night and make me think, like, yeah. wait, huh, what if we're, like, day six? <laughs> this, <laughs> like, this, actually sort of, this actually sort of goes into my, into my overall views of, of, well, science in general right now. Right, where what is it? I think that the biggest problem in any scientific field that we have, and okay. this also sort of leads to, to a general aura of dishonesty, where a lot of people are, are more primed on... On trying to find a way to be right, so that way they can get a, you know, that way they can get their paycheck, or that way they can get that, okay. that, you know, that, yeah, that, I exactly the, know the what next you're amount about. of money that they, that they need to to get whatever equipment they want, than they are in finding the truth. And so, the way I see it is, the best the best scientists are those that are more interested in finding, aren't. Okay, they're more interested in finding the truth than they are in proving themselves right. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Sometimes, yeah, I know exactly what you're trying to say. I mean, if you have, you know, if you have a hypothesis and it happens to be right, good for you. But you should not be only willing to accept information that supports your theory and only your theory. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes prevent all yeah. information. That's how. That's how we. That's how we advance. So yeah, sometimes you just get that feeling that there's just like scientists and people, not not just scientists, but people in general, ra rather be right than know the truth. It's like well, I mean that. I mean technically that's how advertising works, but no, I know, but like you know what I mean. Like I that gets that kind of bugs me because I rather like I rather be wrong and know what is right. Like I'd rather know I'm wrong and like know what's right. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a, like it's I, a whole it's a whole thing of being able to own up to your mistake. Exactly. Like if I had a theory on the way dominoes fell, and I said that, oh, it's because of the way you push them over that causes them all to fall, and really it's not the way I push them over. It was like destined to fall or something. Like, uh, and um, like if someone proved me wrong, I'd be like, wow, thank you. I'm glad I know the right answer now. Yeah. However, of course, you know, being right still does carry some weight. Yeah. That's only, no, because, know. That's only because, you know, experiments are expensive. Yes, and, exactly. You know, that's if, the thing. That's the difference if, between, like, an average Joe and a scientist. Yeah. If the company that supports you, you know, is more interested in, a, in being right, then obviously you, by extension, are also more interested in being right because, like, you know, that gives you the money that you need to continue research. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing sometimes. It's like, oh, you're right? Hey, we'll give you more grant money. Yeah. Oh, you're wrong? Yeah. You're not getting any more money. <laughs> yeah, that, but, that also, but that also means that it hits much harder when someone disproves your theory. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, a, really, it's a really hard game to play, you know? Yeah, like right now, one of the biggest things that, uh, well, you know, one of the things that we used to be worried about was, was actually because of a, because of a neutrino, I think it was, that travel, 
that apparently traveled faster than light. Okay. What about it? People, people were worried that that because even something as small as that, people were worried about about something like that being able to derail the theory of relativity, which honestly uh, would, would okay. put like like you know it would sort of put, it would almost put Einstein to shame. Yeah, I mean, some sometimes it has to be done though. Like, yeah. what if it? What if Einstein wasn't right? What if he was just slightly off? And, oh, yeah, that's I, the thing, though, because even even if one small part of like you could have you could have a theory that that encompasses multiple areas, but if one small part of it is wrong, then the whole thing is wrong. Yeah, exactly. And then you need to rethink the entire thing. Like it's like okay, let's make it like draw a comparison to a math problem. Like, say the math problem has, like, five steps. If, um, it doesn't matter how well you do step two, three, four, and five, if you messed up step one, it's not right. Yeah. You know? It's, if you messed up the slightest thing, nope, you're wrong, dude. <laughs> Completely threw off your entire thing. Actually, actually, math is a, is a really good, is a really good example of, of something like that, because, yeah, you get one. You get one wrong number one time. Yes. And suddenly your answer is is like like millions of places off. Mm -hmm. And yes. that's that's really the potential that you deal with in some fields of science where one mistake can really make a huge difference. Yeah, exactly. That one mistake can lead from you being the like, being looked at as one of the smartest scientists ever, or being a lack and stuff. Yeah. It's literally... It's a really hard place to be sometimes. But I know, um, you have interests of, uh, being a physicist, is that correct? That is, in, that is in fact correct. Yeah, so I think, uh, like... What are your, like, views on the field right now, and would you want to be in it at this point? Well... Honestly, like over time, I've been, I've been, because at first my interest first came up when I, I think it was like, like I feel like two years ago. Yeah. And since then, you know, I st I slowly started to get get a hold of how difficult it would be, not only to not only to enter the field, but how difficult it would be afterwards. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. Because. Yeah, because at first I was, you know, I was hearing all this, all this news about discoveries that were made and and the experiments that were used to do them, well, to find the information, and I was, and I was like, this this would be like the best thing ever, and I would and I have enough money, to, well, not enough money, but I haven't, you know, I'd have enough time to also do to also do side stuff and all that, mm -hmm. and really that's hardly the case, like most. Most of this that do the that do, you know, they find the larger things. They devote like large amounts of their time to that one subject. Yeah. And so, so like for me, I would honestly, I don't think I, I don't think I'll get that much done. You don't think so? No. Do you like? Not really. So what are you? You've been, do you like working on a lot of different things? Is that what you mean? Or well, or like because like. Generally speaking, you have, you're usually going to be working on like one specific thing until it's, it's yeah. done, you know. So, yeah, and I mean, it's not that I can't do that. I mean, most of the time, that is how I do things, where I focus on one on one major goal and have everything else as a sort of side, you know, as a sort of side project. But it's the whole concept of of maybe I might not even have the side con the uh, the side projects, you know. Yeah, exactly. There's like there's a chance you won't even get the chance to do the side projects because you have to demote all your time to the one thing you have to get done, and you know so yeah. that that's especially if, especially if I end up working for you know for a lab that's you know that's contracted to some yeah. specific place or exactly. or or supported by a larger entity then then I'm not even chances are I might not even be able to to work on something that I may have been interested in I might be working towards you know someone else's you know, towards 
trying to find results that someone else would like rather yeah. than what would actually be, you know? Exactly. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's funny to think we got to here after talking about religion. Well, I mean, that is sort of how... Yeah, it's usually, like, the, how it takes place now. Like, usually yeah. religion and science are very interchangeable when, um... When you, when you ask someone's uh, view on religion, you basically have to ask them their view on science, too. Yeah, cause especially especially now, where, where there's a lot of people, well, actually, no. Well, yeah, there's a lot of people that are really proud, and I mean, like, really, really proud of the position that they have, where if you, like, sometimes you don't even have to ask. Yeah. I, sometimes they'll... They'll just walk into a room, well, or rather, it'll, it'll basically be like the equivalent of walking into a room and immediately saying, I'm an atheist, or yeah. immediately walking into a room <laughs> and saying, and saying, God is the best thing to happen ever. Yeah, this just reminds me of a uh, Dane Cook joke. Uh, Dane Cook had a bit where he um, told a story about one time he was in the elevator and uh, someone sneezed next to him and he was like, oh, God bless you. Because he wanted to be polite and everything. And uh, the guy literally turns to him, doesn't say thank you. He says, yeah, I'm atheist. Oh, man. It's like, what? <laughs> no, that's Why not, we, no. That's mean, not, it's, so you can say thank like that, you. <laughs> it's, one thing to, it's one thing to say what you, you know, it's one thing to state your beliefs, but it's another thing to, to you know, to completely, like, he just completely rejected another person's act of kindness. Exactly, just because, just because you want to get your point across that you're atheist. It's like, I don't care! <laughs> I'm trying to be, yeah. I'm trying to be it's nice! Like, it's like, I'm trying to be nice to you. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, I know, I remember we used to have uh, talks about, like, vegan. Vegans? Oh, uh, yes, the vegans. Do you want to go a little rant about that? <laughs> go for it. I honestly well, go for it. Well, it's not... There's our... You know what, can you, just tell the story about, you had a story about vegans. About that, you had a story where you had an argument with the guy. Oh, uh, well, I mean, it wasn't really, it wasn't, wasn't really that much of an argument. Yeah, but, but just, just, like, tell, tell, tell the audience. Okay. So, and this is actually, this is actually over the internet, so. Yeah. It's probably no surprise what, what's about to, what's about to happen. Yeah, exactly. But, okay. So. I was watching some videos on YouTube, and one and one of the comments, I think it, was, I forgot what it was. But I think it was like it was like something about some new technology to like grow, to like you know to grow artificial meat in a lab. Yeah. And what and one of the people that was commenting was a vegan, and they're and they're making a huge deal out of. Of how they don't even need that because because oh plants like certain certain foods have enough like yeah certain earth grown plants have enough protein in them to to still sustain healthy muscle growth and how apparently uh, and how apparently consuming meat was was saying that that was only you know that was only good for the for our past selves like the Neanderthals and all of that yeah. And so, I posted a reply, which is honestly my first mistake. Like yeah. I usually try. First to keep, mistake, arguing <laughs> with them. <laughs> I usually try. To, I usually try to keep from making any sort of contact over over comments unless you know it's absolutely needed to be done. Yeah, but I posted a reply, and I, I'm like, okay, so things like this are not necessary, but that's but that. that but does that mean that we are automatically not allowed to do them anymore? Are we not? Are we no longer allowed to allowed to take advantage of our place on? Well, even though our place on the food chain right now is sort of artificial, because there's a lot of stuff that would easily take us down if not for you know the infrastructure that we have in place. But aside from that, you know, are we not allowed to take advantage of our place on the food chain and and so on? And in and his reply was literally, it was almost like he copy and pasted his original comment. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And he even did he even did the same thing to a couple of other people, and with one person, he, like one person, he basically 
you know, he used an ad hominem argument, which is, you know, which means to the man. Yeah. And to be frank, one of the big, one of the first mistakes that people that you can make when arguing with someone is using ad hominem argument because when you need to resort to insulting the person over making your point, That's, then that yeah. means that you you know it it shows that you're getting to the end of your argument and you can't yeah. you know, you're you're starting to struggle to find new ways to argue. Basically, when you go to straight to insulting the person, that's when you're out of like things to say for your side. Yeah, that's when you're out of that's when you're out of like all the ammo. That's when you have all the ammo that you have. It's basically like to put it okay to put it in a sense like like Battlefield or Call of Duty. It's when you're out of ammo and you need to start using your knife. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> it's it's not gonna get well. It's if it does get you somewhere, then you are extremely lucky, or the other person just didn't you know just didn't know how to handle it. Exactly. Yeah. I, I'm just realizing I never uh, talked about my religious beliefs. <laughs> Wait, what? But I never spoke about my religious beliefs. Uh, if, you're not, if, you want, if you want to go ahead... Oh, wait, Sam. One more time. You're the host here. Yeah. Um, no, man, I consider you took a break here. Dude, you've been as just on as just as many of these as I have, so... Just saying, oh, yeah. man. Hey, lyrical. Hey, lyrical's down one. If we're okay, I really want to uh, like keep track of this. Who's been on the most shows? Right now, me and you are at the top at five, right? Yeah. Including this one, we're on five of the five. Lyrical's been on four of the five. Um, who? Captain Pajama Shark's been on two. Um. Then everyone else has been on one, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, Ty Killer was on one, and then Darth Murphy was on one. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so, right now, me and you are tied for the lead of most background noise appearances ever. I'm just, I'm just saying, man, it's, <laughs> <laughs> technically speaking, right. we're tied, so. Yeah. Unless you, right, uh, you so. unless you want to miss episode, uh, here and there, like, give me the lead, no, I'm kidding. Um, no, I don't think that's happening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude, me and you can put on a show by ourselves. Look at this. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's going on right now. Dude, we're doing it. All right, well, I'll jump into my beliefs. Um, I believe... I guess I'm... Um, That's hard to say. I honestly feel like I'm somewhere near you Um, with this. Because I don't believe that either side is 100% right. You know? Like, I don't, I think the real answer lies between some sort of mixture of both sides. Like, I feel like that there has to be some parts of science that are, there's some parts of science that are no doubt right, you know? Like, they're, they're proven and they're right. But there's also a lot of things from the religious side that make a lot of sense. Like... Okay, maybe that some of the stories from the Bible weren't 100% accurate. I don't know. Or maybe some of them are, you know? Like, you never really know. But, honestly speaking, I would say I'm about in the middle of it. So I honestly would say I'm, like, agnostic. Um, so, it's, it's, you know what I mean? It's, it's hard. It's a really hard way to, like, say it, but yeah, I honestly say I'm, like, 50-50 with it. Hmm. Yeah. I, I So, I, I'd say we're in a, near the same boat. We don't have to go on a <laughs> long, yeah, uh, <laughs> talk yeah, we don't about need, that. I don't think we need to go back to it. We this, don't need uh, to go back to it, but, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say me and you are basically around the same place, um, with that. So, that's, that's pretty cool, you know? Yeah. I like it, I like it. All right. What? Anything you want to know my opinion on? Name it. Well, actually, I, actually, I was gonna go back to the. I was just gonna go back to the vegan thing. Now, uh, my opinion on vegans. Yeah. Okay. Um. I like. Okay. Do you want my opinion on whether just vegans, like vegans in general, or, or like people trying to shove it down your throat? Um. 
let's let's go with like let's go with, okay let's go with like uh just general yeah. general yeah, first just general. okay I'll I'll talk about both then. Uh, general, generally speaking, I mean it's your lifestyle. Uh, so if someone is a vegan, uh, dude, cool for you. I don't care. <laughs> I don't yeah. want. I don't. I don't need you telling me that I'm a vegan. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're. <laughs> sorry about that. Well, well, first well, of all, I, you're not I telling me that I'm a vegan because I'm vegan. not. <laughs> so. Uh, but, no, but I don't need you telling me that you're a vegan and that you, uh, that, that, uh, eating cows is, is Satanist. It's like, cause there, there are a lot of people that, like, be like, oh, eating okay. meat is, that, eating meat. more into the, uh, religion, religion thing, because there are some, there are some religions that consider cows sacred. I, I, not what I was going for, but you know what, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I, but, I mean. <laughs> there's just... I don't know. Sometimes there, if it's your if it's your belief and you honestly think that is the right way to do it, if you want to make your entire diet based on nothing but vegan stuff, dude, I have no problem with that. But if soy, you're trying soy products that would kill me, yeah. Well, that's you have an allergy, so that's different. You have an excuse not to be a vegan, actually. You can use you can use that when you are talking to that guy. Well, actually, technically, actually, technically, that's not even that's not really an argument though, because they they you know there are alter there are even yeah, alternatives to soy sh products. Sh don't tell them that. Don't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah, like I was saying, um, as long as you're not trying to basically preach to everyone about it, I have no problem with it. There's like if you're a vegan dude great for you. I'm like, ah, uh, if you, that's the way you want to be, you would do it. Um, but if you choose that you like meat, and you're gonna eat meat, cool for you, but I don't, you know what, it's works on both sides. I don't want someone coming up to me and being like, man, all I eat is meat. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, or I don't want anyone to come up to me and say that, dude, ah, uh, Eating meat is terrible. Why would you ever do that? You're you're a terrible Especially person. Especially not weird to know of your meal. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, well, um, it's like, uh, you're eating, like, you, like, okay, picture this. You're eating a salad. You're like, wow, I really want a salad right now. I'm gonna eat this salad. And then someone comes up to you, dude, there's no meat in that. What's wrong with you? Or you're eating, you're about to cut into a nice juicy steak, and like a vegan comes up, or a vegetarian, because it's meat and it's. Wait, yeah, wait, yeah, but um, there's that too. Yeah, um, but and you're you're about to take a nice bite of it, and you're like, dude, you're a terrible person. <laughs> I, well, how are you gonna feel? <laughs> it's like, I'm gonna, you're gonna make now, now you're gonna feel bad for eating that steak, and <laughs> it's like someone told you that you're a terrible person because you're hungry and you ordered the steak. It's like, man, why are you here anyway? <laughs> yeah. It's like I'm trying to eat, man. <laughs> Why are you going to do this? <laughs> you, know, you know what complete this scenario? What? If you were if you were in a steakhouse that only that like only yes. served like meat products. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> man, you're vegan, why are you here why anyway? Are you here? <laughs> it's like why are you here? It's or, or, or they like they walked in with a sign, like like there's like a huge <laughs> like a huge mob outside and it's just like you you just like the one dude who walked in like 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 yeah. I'm here to tell each of you individually that you are terrible people. Yes. <laughs> it's like, dude, you're a terrible person. You're a terrible person. You're a terrible person. Like, okay. <laughs> it's like, we're at a steakhouse. The sign says steak on it. Why are you here? You're vegan. <laughs> there's nothing... There's no point in it, dude. It's... I don't know. Alright, but something I want to ask, and I, I think I'm going to start off with my opinion is... um. Honestly, just marriage in general, and I guess gay marriage, um, it, which is always a really big topic. Well, my question to you is, why isn't it legal in all 50 states yet? I, I guess, it's a, well, it, it seeing, should how be. It for the, seeing how it went for those that have it now, my only guess would be that the vote hasn't started yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I, I'm wondering, would it... If every state had a vote of it, would it would it pass? You know, um, I don't know. But honestly speaking, 
my honest opinion of gay marriage is I don't my is the same as my opinion of marriage. If two people are in love, then they should get married. And if they want to get married, get married. It's simple as that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it, I mean, it doesn't bother me anyway. Yeah, exactly. It shouldn't bother anyone. The fact that someone else's personal life could bother someone else is ridiculous. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just got a um, a message from Lyrical Phoenix saying that he can hop on. So uh, don't let like, don't let don't let keep it. Don't let him. I want I want to keep us at the top. <laughs> All right, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna add him to the group and see if he comes in. Um. All right, so if he hops in, he hops in. So we're already 50 minutes in, so he's kind of kind of a little late. I wonder if he's with. Uh, he might be with Ty Killer right now, actually. Hello. Yeah. Are you with uh you with Ty Killer right now? Yeah, but he's logging onto his laptop too. Okay. So. Well. What, well, great joining us. We're 50 minutes in, man. We're only 15 minutes? 50. 50. 50. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> so, We're 15 uh, minutes in, Ty Killer. <laughs> We're, I mean, I'm, I can go for a while still. I, what about you, Circuit? Uh, I got I got plenty of fuel to spare. Yeah, I'm... Which actually brings I'm, me into, into one of the topics that I, that I wanted to talk about. What's that? Racing. All right. Um... Shoot for it. Go. Well, this this actually reaches a bit into my into my past. Actually, not even a bit. It reaches like really far into my past. When he was a bad boy. <laughs> a bad boy. All right, the series talks over. It seems. <laughs> this was a very serious. I should put like a, a time mark on it. Miracle Phoenix enters here. If you want to hear serious talk, go before this. <laughs> uh, but. Oh, really? Seriously? You guys were, like, dead serious? Oh, well, um, we weren't dead serious. No, we weren't, but we were talking we were... about more, like, um, uh, more, like, serious subjects, I would say. Like, more, like, adult Dude, I subjects. I read the lightheartedness. I mean, come on. Yeah, exactly. That's what you do. <laughs> he's guy who, he's guy who opens up the jokes that, that keep us from being really awkward. Yeah, exactly. It's like, uh, what, what do we do? Uh, uh, <laughs> you missed my, um, I, I already read a creepypasta. Oh, really? Yeah, I did. Oh, I can't wait to... Tune in because I can actually watch this week's podcast. Yeah, you can watch like the first fifty minutes of it and uh, as a guest. Uh, but I'm gonna know it circuit. Uh, we were talking yeah. about like a uh, chain of people and like how many times they've appeared. So right now, me and Circuit Breaker are at five. I'm gonna say you're at four and a half right now. Okay. To be fair, I did tell you to wait and hey, you start hey, to tell me. Hey, dude, so, the, the show yeah. had to start. The show must go on. The show must go on, you know. Me and Circuit Breaker... I can tell you that I would be on later. Yeah, but... And, and you started without us, so... Hey. Except if it's four and a half, you're to blame for the half that I missed. Oh, uh, that's... No, not, dude. You could have been ready earlier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sounds reasonable. Uh, I mean, the show starts at a certain time, and that's, that's, that's it. I told you I would be busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not talk about this right now. I gave you plenty of warning. <laughs> Are you sure you two aren't married? Yeah, right? At this point. Oh, Jesus Christ. Was this like a conversation topic or something? Yeah, that, that, that's based on what I talked about. No, about. I'm not married to Tony. No, no. <laughs> I, I'm straight, just saying. <laughs> just want to throw that out there. Yes, that, I, I agree with that. that show is. Yeah. But anyway, okay, back to racing. Go for it. Okay, so this this actually reaches far into in my past, and like I'm talking like back when I was a kid. What I would do is because on on the Speed Channel they would have they would have reruns of the, of the old Speed Racer show, and so they were they were they were playing nights while I would just stay up to like four in the morning just to catch an episode. Yeah. Of course it would be like of course it would be like Saturday night. Like, you know, like Saturday nights or Saturday Okay, morning, so you, Saturday. you wouldn't have school the next day anyway, so. Saturday night, I've got no plans, so I'm going to stay home and do the loner dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Yep, yeah, yeah, like, shows like that, like, they really, they really sort of awaken like a, like a, okay, to, to sort of, to sort of give rise to this old, to this old cliche, 
and they sort of awakened my need for speed. <laughs> yeah, and I, so, I agree. I and so, need for speed. And so, while I never really, while I never really generally followed racing, I always loved like participating in races. Mm. Uh, okay. Which, which is why now I play a lot, a lot of Need for Speed and, and uh, Trackmania, because of that, because of the, you know, just they sort of satisfy that, you know, that that thirst, so to speak. All right. But, uh, yeah, I got you. But I mean, for me, racing was never about the car. Like it was never about the car. It was never about like what made what model, what, like who made the parts or anything like or anything like that. For me, it was it was more about the drivers, and and that carries over in my in my belief that skill can can in some cases outrank the the equipment. If the driver skill is high enough, then they can outperform then then they can outperform a worse driver with a better car. Mm. Of course, this has nothing to do with with a drag strip, but. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that is that's the thing. Well, in yeah, dra <laughs> a drag strip, it, you know, there's completely different rule set there. But, yeah. but like, you know, like, like in 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 a drag race, strip, the car actually does probably matter just as much as the driver. Oh yeah. <laughs> but but in like but in like more in like more traditional forms like like NASCAR <laughs> or F1, that's where places where the where the driver has a much larger impact than the car does. And yes, even, and even exactly. in some street racing, okay. like, you know, like illegal street racing. So I'm going to tune in for a second. Um, uh, I have no idea what movie this is from, by the way. Ty Killer just came online. Um, uh, oh, oh, so, you, you know the one freaky part in my, like the one time where I was just, I was quiet for a long time. And then I was just like, I like to burn things for fun. Oh, God. <laughs> so, th this is a movie quote. It's like, he's like, Freddy, what do you like to do? I don't know. Burn stuff? <laughs> <laughs> That's me. That's me as a kid. Hello, dude. Hey, what's up, Brian? Hey. What's up? Alright, guys. Ty Killer 38 has joined as well. Can you guys hear me in the background echo? Uh, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. That's yeah, fine. Just a bit. Because we're in the same room. Yeah. Uh, do you guys want to tell them about what you what you do? Uh, should we say actual locations, or should we just say? It's up to you. Okay. Does it matter? Does it matter? Not really. I'll mute my mic and you say it so we don't echo. Okay. They got married. No. <laughs> okay, so, what happened was, um, uh, uh, my dad and I, once a year, we take this trip up to Albany, New York, and we catch... The RPI Big Red Freakout Weekend, which pretty much it's just a major um, uh, hockey game where pretty much everyone goes crazy over RPI. And uh, so we just got back from the game a little while ago. So now we're at the hotel and we're just staying the night and then uh, leaving tomorrow morning. RPI won 4 to 1. Oh, okay. And it was a great start because in the first 36 seconds, we uh yeah. we scored a point. Oh yeah, you got a goal. goal. With an amazing fight. Huh. That's pretty cool. Goalie got into it. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is this isn't Circuit Breaker's cup of tea, I can tell. <laughs> no. I Circuit Breaker's not a sports guy. I'm not I'm not like like it well I mean there are some there are some sports where I'll where I'll gladly play them, but I like watching sports. I just get I just get so bored. Speaking just of so you like been to a hockey game before? Actually, you know what? no hockey might be an exception to that rule just because just because of this you know the amount of stuff that they that they can do to each other. Oh yes. All right. Wait, speaking I'm, of uh, speaking of this is, uh, wait what? This is uh, really funny. So in all the years that I've gone. To the big red freak out. Um, uh, there's never a fight is never broken out. And Ryan comes and he's like, "Hey, does our guy get to fight a lot?" And that's the first time that our has ever gotten into a fight. Because you've been there at least. Many 
take some budget more often. Yes, because that was awesome. Speaking of sports, though, how many of you watch the Super Bowl? Not long. I was Dude, like, oh, the Super Bowl's on. Okay, now it's a shutout. Okay, how whatever. disappointing was the Super Bowl this year? I, I I'd honestly say the Super Bowl. Hearing people talk about it, I can already tell that that there are a lot of. Well, actually, no, I didn't even I didn't even need to hear about it. I just felt like a I just felt like a massive surge of anger and sadness come from one direction. Yeah, somewhere. honestly, I was like, I, I was like someone. I'm just like Seahawks won. Yeah, I think everyone other than uh, Seattle Seahawks fans thought that was a terrible Super Bowl to watch. Um, so did the NFL. They're like, oh, shit, our ratings are going down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, the whole like storyline going in was uh, this is huge game for Peyton Manning, and Peyton Manning didn't perform. <laughs> um, first two seconds. Oh, crap. They, the first... Literally speaking, Jacob, I know you, uh, or Sick Breaker, uh, I know you didn't watch it, but the first snap was snapped over Peyton Manning's head and was a safety. First snap <laughs> of the game. Yeah, Not even. The worst points for their, uh, Super Bowl pool was like, yes! Wanna know what's a fact? Um, Mark Cuban bet, Mark Cuban, um, owner of the Mavericks, multi billionaire, bet. That a um a safety would happen on the first snap of the game. He bet like twenty million dollars or something. No, he bet like a million dollars on it. Won like twenty million more dollars. There was also someone like bet like ten million or something on the Broncos. Yeah, uh, I heard about that. And they just like, oh, that's Aubrey. Wait, that's right. Wasn't there that one player that bet that bet a million? So, um, there might have been. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure about that one. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was another like he, if I remember correctly, he was another football player. So a million for him would be like a would be like a drop in the bucket. Well, it still. depends what, what how good he is. Or you can get it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people in the NFL that probably will never make him. Well, not in the NFL, but there's a lot of people like who make the practice squad and probably will never make a million dollars. Mm. They basically just pay to be ragdolls. <laughs> Welcome to the NFL, you're right, Yeah, what? exactly. <laughs> Basically. But the cool part is, most of the time, the practice squad gets uh, a ring, too, if you win the Super Bowl. So that's, that's always a question. What is that, may I ask? Oh, that might be me. I don't know if you can hear that. That is you. What is... So I can hear it in real life. What is it? I, I'm playing Monster Hunter. Yep. Trial, but... That's probably it. <laughs> oh, man. I just uh What's I just up? Die or something. What's up, bud? Okay. Well, you know how whenever a big issue like like for example what we were talking about earlier with the whole gay marriage thing? Yeah. Like whenever a big issue like that comes up, half the time people that the people that make a huge argument are not even people that are really involved in the matter. Like, okay. Like okay, when, doing? well, actually, this is this actually still kind of is a big issue, but, but like you know, like when, when like this, when like suicides were when suicide rates were going up, there were a lot of people that were being mad for the people that could, you know, for the people that were suffering through this kind of stuff. Like yeah, like if like okay, I get. Okay, I knew, I really need to gather my thoughts for this, but no, no, no I understand. It's a, it's a hard subject. To this, talk this about. was this was something that, like that just like came up on the fly right now. So I'm just like, you're like, uh, I really want to talk I, about this, but yeah, I can't really remember I what I'm saying. This, but at the same time, I need to think about this first. That way, I can actually get my, you know, get my thoughts together. Okay, so uh, Mark, what did you do today? I went. To a hockey game. Okay, so let me tell you about the story about Mark when he went to the hockey game. Oh boy. Okay. So let's let Circuit Breaker gather his thoughts while I tell this. Gather my thoughts and examples. Yeah, lyrical dude, you came on, man. <laughs> yeah. So uh, okay. Yeah, so, 
All right, I yes. Not going on. <laughs> Lyrical's like, okay, I just got end call, end call, end call. <laughs> but uh, don't need to hear this. Okay, so you wouldn't believe what happened when Lyrical went to the hockey game. Okay, the, the our story takes place beforehand. Okay, so Lyrical said he went with his father. But his father actually isn't in this story. His father gave him a little bit of money for him and Ryan to go to a store. And, like, dude, they was just like, dude, here's some money. Just go. Just have some fun. Meet me back here at, like, 5 o'clock. It might have been 6. Was it 5 or 6? What? Was it 5 or 6? The yeah. game was at 7. No, dude, you're not paying attention to the story, man. No, the... The part of the story when your father told him to meet you back is five or oh, six. Five. Five? It's five. five. Okay. Alright. So meet it's back at five. Um, so they went to go, but they were thinking the entire time, what are we going to do? So they just wandered town, you know, just walking around. They just kept walking and they walking and walking dead and walking alive. And like... They just kept moving. Fucking dead and walking alive. Yeah, it's it's a very complicated story. Do you want to hear that part? Okay, so <laughs> so they were walking and um they were struck by lightning, both of them. They're actually it's actually kind of funny. They they both were wearing these purity rings, so where they're made of metal, um because they're versions for life. Um, so they they went for the high five and as they high fived. Um, they're, they got struck by lightning, and it went through the rings and shocked them both, and they basically died. And then there happened to be this squirrel with, uh, defibs right by. Uh, it, the, the squirrel's name was Carl, actually. I don't know if you've met him before. You guys might have heard of him It's Tactical Carl. It's that, no, it's just Carl. He had, oh, it's Carl the Squirrel, dude. Don't... Are you sure it wasn't? Are you sure it was his cousin, Tactical Carl? No, there's only Rather one squirrel. There's, Carl, o- there's only one squirrel named Carl! Yeah, Jamal. There's only right. one. Well, J- Jamal's here, obviously. Jamal charged the defense. Okay, so and then, uh, actually no, wait, no. There was two pairs of defense. My bad. Carl went to uh, revive Lyrical, and Jamal went to revive uh, Thykiller over here. So oh. they they're both just going like, Shh, clear, Poof. and then like it doesn't work. They do it like 86 times. And they're they're pretty much dead. So what Carl does is um he he stands up lyrical and then Jamal rolls around because he's an acorn. So Carl stands him Jamal up as awesome well. Breakdancing skills. Dude, Jamal is the greatest breakdancer that ever lived. But that's another story for another time. Um and so they're both just standing up and then Carl just keeps like walking them along. So they look they're dead but they're walking and then. He, Carl's like, I'm going to try the defibs one last time. So he does them. Boof, boof. They both wake up. They both just like, now they're walking alive. Okay. So. So okay, basically. Uh, so yeah, that's, that was a little bit of a. Okay, let me get back to the main uh, story. So they're basically walking around town. Dead and alive at the same time. Uh, and they're like, what? What can we do with all this money, dude? We have like. Two dollars and fifty cents that my dad gave us, and we really want to spend it on some money, dude. So much money. Two dollars and fifty cents could buy you almost nothing in the city, dude. Uh, it'll so, buy you the world, dude. It'll buy you nothing in the world, dude. It's so so much of nothing, dude. So dude. Uh, they went. They're like, dude, we can go to Seven Eleven. So they stopped at a Seven Eleven. Actually, you know what? What? Two dollars and fifty cents probably could get you a decent amount of Seven Eleven. Oh, it wasn't 50 cents? No, it was 2,050 cents. Oh. Yeah. But yeah, that actually might... If I got my pricing right, then that actually might get you a can of fresh air in China. They might, actually. They might. There's, there's actually a guy who got, who got rich off of selling cans of fresh air because... Of hey, dude, man, this is my story, man. Why are you jumping in right now, dude? Come on. Because of reasons, dude. okay? Hey, uh, Emma, Emma doesn't like that re- uh, answer, so she'll, she'll attack you. Um... And, okay, so they're walking around town, so they stop in the 7-Eleven, but you wouldn't guess who worked the counter at the 7-Eleven. It was me. Yeah, oh. I was, I was, it was me and Circuit Breaker, actually. 
and and well, dude, you, you got you cutting me off here, man. Sorry. Okay, so you weren't there. Yeah. No, Circuit Breaker, actually, you weren't there. It was Carl. Carl and Jamal were my uh my lackeys for the day, and uh, we were working at Seven Eleven, and they walk in. I'm like, hi, welcome to Seven. Oh, you guys, what are you doing here? This is my secret life that no one knows about. Me working in the Seven Eleven in uh, Albany, New York. And they're like, uh, dude, I, I didn't didn't mean to stomp on your parade, but it's not really a secret anymore. And I'm like, I, I know you guys are here, so it's not a secret if you guys are here. And you're telling the story. Yeah, I know. Oh, uh, it could say a secret. Uh, <laughs> Bro, I, you got dumped. Yeah. You got dumped. You got dumped. I will dunk on you. <laughs> um, okay, so they they do that, and uh, basically what happens is they're just, they just they want to buy something, and I went up to them, and I'm like, okay, let's have a bet, double or nothing. Uh, so I told them, if they win, I'll give them $5, and they can buy anything, basically, within $5 and seven hundred that they wanted. So, and if they lose... I get the money. Me and the squirrel and the acorn go party later with the five bucks. So it was a break dancing competition. They get to pick one of those two, and we get to pick one of us. All right. So, so the lyrical and uh, Taiko are just talking, and lyrical's like, "Man, I got this, man. I am the twelfth greatest break dancer in it that ever lived." And he's Brian's like what twelve? Wow, that's that's pretty high up there. Yeah, we'll go. Well, you go. So uh, lyrical's doing his moves and he's like dancing and spinning on the ground. Like it's like a it looks like a mid like late eighties early nineties like hip hop video. That's how like he was spinning on the ground like on his head and everything. And uh, he was really really impressive. But then out of nowhere we were like who we got? We sent up Jamal. Jamal, oh, I was Jam waiting for Jamal. Yeah, Jamal came up, and Jamal shredded so very hard. Jamal, dude, Tycho needs glasses now. That's how great. I always had glasses. Not before then. Not before then. Yeah, man. Yeah, you didn't you have there. glasses. You, no, he was you there. Already. He was there. What? What? Just tank already. What? Uh, God. Playing World of Tanks in the background. Oh, okay, that's oh. nice. But yeah, so they did that, and um, Jamal basically whooped Lyrical at breakdancing. And uh, that's how the story ends. They met back with uh, his dad at, at five, and uh, Ty Killer couldn't stop laughing because uh, Lyrical um, got his butt kicked by Acorn at breakdancing. Dude, and, uh, I, I, I actually find that kind of cool. believable. And, uh, and that is the totally legit story about Mark for the week. That's well, it. Then. Go for it. What do you guys think? Beautiful. Beautiful. That's, uh, completely legit. Yeah, right? As always. Yeah, it's always legit. Completely. Totally. Yeah. These are background noise stats, guys. Completely legit. It is so very legit. Oh, you guys got uh, anything you want to talk about? Uh, really. We can continue the story about last week with Russ. The update came out. All right, go for it. Well, I haven't got a chance to play it yet, but they officially took out um, uh, the zombies and me and seven of them put in, and they added a new enemy called the Red Bears. So I don't know. Oh, yeah? That's pretty cool. Yeah. What do you think about it? Well, uh, since I haven't got a chance to experience yet, I have no real official oh, okay. opinion, but I kind of, like I said last week, I'm going to miss the zombies a lot. Yeah, but what about, what's your opinion on, like, the new concept of, what you've heard about it, at least? Well, people are saying it's harder to get resources, because, like, the zombies used to have a lot of good resources, and, like, blueprints for shotguns, blueprints for MP5s, they'd have research kits. That was the best way to get research kits. Hmm. And people are really, really mad about one thing. Well, I mean, with the, well, I mean, you said that, like, you know, in the in the patch notes, didn't they say that, that the zombies were going to be replaced with mutants? Yeah, but they haven't added them yet. They will be there. Uh, 
uh, kit exactly for. Right. Well, in the case of the re in the case of the research kits, what they could have is the ordinary mutants, and then there could be like mutant scientists sure. carrying that carry their own research kits. That yeah, might actually open up a lot of opportunity. Yeah, but research kits are kind of rare, so that if you have like a zombie like that, then they I guess it would be kind of off. Yeah. Trying to get then that's kind of gets rid of the purpose. Yeah. yeah. Mark right side. Yep. I know. There's quite a few of them. Yeah, I've noticed. There's quite a few of them. There, there are our tails. I don't think we're gonna make it. Rose, whatever you do, don't let go. Don't give up, Rose. Do you see what you have started? You put, you put Ant into movie mode. Do you know how difficult it is to get him out of movie mode? There can only be one. Now you need to run to his house and give him medication. Excuse me, we're in Albany. You're the one closest. This is I know, Sparta! I know, I have to run to his house. I'm running to his house already. No, I'm not going to abandon the show for that. I know what you're thinking. Did I fire five bullets or did I fire six? God, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and to be to be yeah. per to be perfectly honest, in all this confusion, I forgot myself. Thank you, friendly. But I want to ask you one on, one right simple back. question. Give me a minute. Do you feel lucky? Yes. Punk. Yes. You do? Okay, that's cool. Did he actually leave? <laughs> He's going to you. Mark, do you left? Do you left? Yeah. Alright, you should be fine. I was trying to get under the hill. <laughs> it's an M3, M3 Lee shit. Oh, the M3. Wait, why are you afraid of an M3 Lee? Where I'm in a Russian light tank, and so is. And he's in a cheat off. Um, oh, God. Well, just go around the side. Can you get around the side of it? Not right now, because he's on top of a hill, and we're both on uh, top. Well, I mean, you can still, you can still sort of, you can still sort of, um, outrace his turn rate. Because in that, you know, in the game, the M3 is a piece of shit. Wait a second, he's back. We didn't even realize. Of course I'm back. I'm black, remember? Yeah, of course. I'm the reason why this show isn't completely racist. Racist. Actually, speaking of which, we're, we haven't done our we haven't done our weekly race show. Frankly, I know it's a weekly thing. Frankly, my dear, well, we'll I don't give a damn. Every once in a while, so it might as well be weekly. Frankly, sure. we don't have the budget. Oh yeah, that's right. The I'm gonna make him off of camp abuse. Dang it! Did I not give him the right dose? Toto, I've got a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. God damn! Instead, you just made it worse. I think so. You know what? We we might just have to run the show without him. Lyrical, uh, lyrical, no, lyrical, 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 lyrical. May the what? force be with you. Dang it! Thank you. You're talking to me? No. Yes. E.T. phone home. E.T. died. Okay then. Ladies and gentlemen. Rose. Please and- What? 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 Sorry? What? Bond. A James Bond. Oh, oh god, he's still in his movie phrase. Oh man. Now we're gonna have to, Now you gotta go sedate him. Oh, Mark's dead. Show oh. me the money! Yay. Okay then. Ladies and gentlemen, please ignore Hydroxide Ant for just experiencing some mental difficulty. What? Said you can't handle the truth. I, I, I can't tell if he was actually talking to me or if that was. I'll be back. But still, I'm hydroxyanus experiencing some mental difficulties. I'll be back. You mean all the time? Besides all the time. Because he likes wearing a striped sweater. I see dead people. But, uh, yeah. So, um, anyway. 
since you two are here, we might Stella! <laughs> what? Stella! Okay, then. It's why we can't have nice things. No, it's not. But anyway. <clears throat> uh, Houston, we have a problem. Houston's I dead. Yeah, Houston's been dead. As God is my witness, I'll never be hungry again. Oh God, tank turrets are larger than my tank. God Keep your me. friends close, but your enemies closer. Okay. Hey, look, Terry. Give me a second. I'll be, I'll be at his house and back in like in like a minute. Say hello to my little friend. Found a little run, my friend. There's no crying in baseball. When you cry, I'm I'm honestly reading off of a list of top 100 movie quotes. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Wait, that was you didn't just sneak in a movie quote. Yeah. What you what? <clears throat> Elementary, my dear Watson. Die. <laughs> Live long and prosper. You. Here's Johnny. I'm actually gonna keep this up. How many top movie quotes? Like, how many top movie quotes are there? Hasta la vista, baby. Oh dang it! He's gonna be like this for a while, isn't he? No, it was Chris. Yo, Adrian! I did it. Rishi. My precious. Okay then. So anyway, yeah, Mark, that fuck up. I didn't know if you could see me or not. Oh, Martini, shaken, not stirred. Well, I realized that now. Yeah. You know, I think I might join you guys and roll the tank. But anyway, who's up first? Who's up first? What? Who's up first? Who's on first? What's on second? Nobody puts baby in a corner. Except for baby. I'm the king of the world. Okay. But anyway, okay, so that was number hundred. Oh. Tony, how high are you? Uh, 100. no, it's Ryan, it's hi, how are you? Oh. I, I skipped around a lot. If I didn't recognize it, I skipped it. Oh. Yeah, we can take this guy, I just I just penetrated his armor. He's come oh, up behind us. So did the Oh god, like, no, come back, come back, come back, we're gonna hit you. Oh, goddammit. It's Jason. Nope, or not. Nope, maybe. Ryan, Ryan, you realize, you realize what you just said. Yeah. You just penetrated his armor. Uh, yeah, you did. Mm hmm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, so. Surely you can't be serious! I am serious. Don't call me Shirley. Uh, you, 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 that's the thing. It's you. <laughs> this one time at band camp. <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay, but anyway, I'm in a glass case of emotion. <laughs> what movie is that from? Anchorman. Oh. Okay, so now he's going to recent. This shit's about to hit the fan. Yes, but I think I'm running. <laughs> Disturbing Peach, I got thrown out a window! I've already been running. What the hell did you hit me? Oh, you're over there. Bastard. Uh, that rug really tied the room together. Mark, Mark, the light tank's over here. Mark, turn around! Oh shit, that's a heavy! Uh, and hey, I'm dead. hey, circuit breaker. Yeah? If peeing your pants is cool, consider me Miles Davis. <laughs> what? That's from uh, Billy Madison. Oh. I was going to oh. say, Billy Madison, one of my favorite movies of all time. I want to be <clears> like, oh, okay. Please. I want to pee my uh, See if you guys can get this one. We're on a mission from God. Your mom. Sometimes from the... Blue that this, was a Galactic series. It's Blues Brothers. It's the Blues Brothers. The mm, silence say that too, though. Don't judge me. Okay. Whoa. Why are we? So, while, while, while it's on his, um, video, no, 
for the last movie thing, let's talk about uh, video games for a minute. Gentlemen, so, you can't fight in here. This is a war room. So, first off, gee, that, that's actually kind of fitting for what's going on right now. But still. Just when I thought you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself. Oh. Oh, what? What? Pardon my French, but but it, Cameron is so tight that if you took a lump of coal and suck it up his arse in two weeks, you'd have a diamond. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, that's classic. That's classic. Hey, Mark. Yeah? Can you invite me to the platoon? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. This I, Mr. I, I Stay Puffs. Okay, he's a sailor. He's in New York. We get this guy laid. We don't have any problems. Uh, classic Ghost Brothers. By the way, we're Ghost Brothers. Ghost Brothers. Ghost Brothers. Sorry. Yep. Yes. Back to your three. Uh, I must have PZ-38Ts. Oh, PZ-38Ts are back. Yeah, but that's tier 8. I'll scout. Okay, but still. For now, let's talk about... Let's talk about mods for for games. Marriage is like a tense and funny episode of Everybody Sorry, Loves tense. Raymond. Only it doesn't last 22 minutes. It lasts forever. Okay. That's from, um, that's yeah. from Knocked Up. His hands are on the Starring, uh, starring Paul Rudd and, uh, Seth Rogen's in his Yeah, there's a Tiger, there's a Tiger, and a Tiger 1 on there, too. Oh. <laughs> okay, I think you guys might be able to name this one. It's, uh, it's more recent. I see you drinking 1%. Is that because you think you're fat? Because you're not. You could be drinking whole if you wanted to. I know this. Oh, right. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Mark. No problem. No, because I dragged that in. What's up? No, I was saying movie quotes, but I dragged that in. Oh, yeah. I'll also yeah. make this its own segment. It's, it seems like he starts this up whenever I start talking, though, so I, I think I might just have to... May the shorts be with you. Spaceballs. Yes, sir. Oh. God damn it. Jake is faster than us. Yes, yes I am. Is. Climbing this hill faster than you. This is American power right here. I will shoot you. Oh. <laughs> okay. But still. Ow, tree. Anyway. Ah, tank. Stop getting in my way. Stop, dog. That guy in little cold. Listen, roll white tanks. Jacob, Jacob, be yes. honest. Everybody knows you never go full retard. Oh, you never. Alright, we're going to ninja cap, guys. Nice try. Oh! Oh, shit. No, 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 no. Ooh. A whole lot of notes right there. You got me. He got me. Oh, I'm from the oh no, both of my tracks are gone. Crap. And I'm dead. That was wonderful. Alright then. I'm that done. Was that was a whole bother nope. Mark. Top right. Mark, you coward, you are hiding in the bush. Because I'm a scout. Oh yeah. We died for our scouts because of our cops. That's job. Ryan, I think we failed. Nah, we won. We totally won, bruh. We won the game. No, why am I alive? Because you failed. Because you failed. You failed to fulfill your purpose. Everybody knows that the first thing that light tanks have to do in order to be a successful scout is go, is go forward and get themselves killed. Mm -hmm. So you're saying after the full retard. Yes. Exactly. No, not full retard. Full lemming. One sec. <laughs> oh god, what did he just do? Guys, guys, love is a battlefield. Okay. Braveheart. Uh, no, this this is a these are song lyrics now. 
That was Pat Benatar. God, why? Why would you? Why? Why are we doing this? You shake my nerves and you rattle my brain. Too much of the love drives a man insane. You broke my will, but what's the thrill? Goodness grace is great. Bonify! Hey, hey, drug side. Shut up. How's that? How's that? Uh, how's that mod work going for you? That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, wh wh which one are you referring to? You referring to my uh, TTT? Yes. Yeah, it's going Trouble pretty good. Actually. Kind of mod work. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know if uh, you guys know, but I uh, I mod a TTT server. Um, and, <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Yeah, yeah, so that's pretty fun. It's a uh, it's uh, called Sumo Wrestling at Cromwell. It's called. Oh, uh, I did do some damage. Never mind. Okay, yeah. back to the garage. Well, it's called. Now we're two, the, three. Yeah, can I, I can I talk for a second. No. Yeah. No. No, it's our podcast now. Baby. You 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 lost your speaking privileges when you started doing the song lyrics, and also moving close, but still. Head it back into the damn garage. Oh. You got it. Sounds like I'm probably it's gonna go off. Something like that. Two, three, ten, go. <laughs> Give me a second. Uh, well, excuse you. Yes, no. Um, I'm gonna go with my steward, just because I haven't driven in a while, but still. So yeah. I have 7,500. So yeah, and your work as a moderator. Oh boy, it's your fun. Kind of got cut off when I was talking about it, so. Uh, um, well, then continue, my good sir. Yes, we will stay quiet, aside from our usual um, combat banter. Oh, oh shit! There's uh, a bomb. A bomb. A bomb in your mom. Uh, okay, uh, I was well, gonna go with the Deus Ex reference. Uh, okay. Well, I I mod I am a moderator on a TTT server called Dylan Man Inc. Uh, it is a great TTT server. So if you uh, are playing TTT and you want Trouble to be a, yeah, obviously, if you didn't know that, you're, you're stupid. So. Um, Actually, well, not really, because not a lot of people know the. I don't care. You know, not a lot of people know the uh, terminology for for Half Life games. Well, uh, or rather, for Source Engine games. As you can see, I'm trying to go down the British heavy line. Uh, oh yeah, I I'm a mod on the server, so if you are playing TTT and you want to be in a really good community. Uh, go to the only one you can see best uh, community around. I've not tried TTT before, so... It's pretty fun. Um, basic, it's a basic set of rules. Uh, and as what? long as you follow them, you should the be good. Oh, you got one shot. Did, they, did you hear ammo rack? I have no clue. They might have hear ammo rack. Actually, you know what? Yeah, they definitely hear your ammo rack. I'm looking at, I'm looking at your course right now. They hear your ammo rack. Pass the ammo rack to Cruiser 4. Oh. Uh, 4, Cruiser 4. Every new one's coming. Oh! It's a new 4. It's a new scratcher. Yeah. Actually, that's the same thing what my crew said, too. They didn't even scratch them. I want my goddamn Panzer IV. You know it, Ryan? It's not that easy. No, I know. It's fair. Or, I'm heading to you. I'll use my advanced spotting range to help you. Never mind. <laughs> Dead. M3 Lee. Back it up. You're right here. Oh. That's a whole lot of dope right there. Oh, yeah. Face is a whole lot of dope. I agree. Can Black Bay free up something? Mark. Protect hey, Mark's a little tired. I'm a mate. I'm not my medium. I'm going, I'm don't worry. I'm a lot more effective if I were in my medium right now, but I'm not. 
And all the light tanks and enemy team are already dying. Help. I am literally a portable shield. Indeed. Oh, that's an M3 lead. Never mind. These things are next to. Oh, yeah. I got him. I think I got him. I got him. You got him? No. Oh, I got him. Damage right before you right before you killed him. Oh, his aim for the t for their top turret. That's what I did. Yeah. I penetrated immediately. Oh. Okay, so let's go hunt some uh, artillery. Is this the one that's got a terrible gun on it, Mark? Which one? Your your tank. I don't know. It's actually got a decent gun. No, yeah, the one that was terrible. I was trying to have the uh, German heavy round. And thus the podcast turns into a World of Tanks commentary. And Tony's like hitting his head right now. Probably. We have hijacked the show. Welcome. With gameplay that they, that they cannot see. So I would suggest that we all go cat. Yeah, I'm dead. So. Like a because uh, they're all really slow, and here is the position. Oh, uh, hang on, I think I got something. Johnny, oh, you can join. Us. Something else. I, I don't have anything to talk about. I'm not it's playing for something. Yeah, I mean, you should join us on uh, and something else on uh, local tanks. Three men squad. Ah, crap. Wait, wait, you only have low tiers, right? Yeah. Maybe Ow. you and me can go. These two have high tiers. Oh. Oh, I don't really care. Is there anything else we can talk about? Oh. Uh, I don't know. Does anyone else have anything they would like to talk about? Well, I don't I think I should. I'm dead. I am out of here. Alright, I might as well call the podcast then. Uh, well, guys, this is uh, episode five, the background noise, and uh, hope you liked it. Um, it was a little disorganized today, but I promise you next week will be better organized. Um, so take care, guys. Uh, see you later.